It's a badge that's only been worn five times before, and even though the first time it appeared was on an SLK, don't let that put you off. A Black Series Merc is a wild thing, lighter, faster and harder than whatever it's based on, and AMG has taken its time with this one. The first AMG GT arrived back in 2015, followed by the pumped up GTC, then the even faster and much better controlled GTR, and then the GTR Pro for good measure, with an integrated roll cage and manually adjustable suspension, a bit like the 911 GT3 RS. Now that AMG has added another 145 horsepower on top of what the GTR already had for a total of 720 horsepower, the only rival it wants to talk about is the 911 GT2 RS, which is convenient, isn't it? Because you can't actually buy one of those new anymore. Anyway, under there is still a 4-litre twin-turbo V8, but it's been fundamentally altered. It's now got a flat-plane crankshaft instead of a cross-plane. The benefits of that are it revs higher, it's more efficient, it's more potent, but weirdly, it doesn't sound nearly as good as a GTR. It doesn't have the same burble or volume. Still, 0-62 in 3.2 seconds and a top speed of 202 miles an hour should go some way towards making up for that. AMG has managed to make the interior of the Black Series feel like as much of an event as the exterior, which is saying something. You sit deep and low and the driving position is absolutely spot on, but controlling all these switches on the centre console is a bit awkward. They're a bit of a stretch and you're impeded by the wing backs on these carbon racing seats. No matter, because you can control all your driving modes from these auxiliary switches on the steering wheel as well. Down here, you'll notice a fabric door pull, a nod to light weighting, but what's the point in that when you've still got the metal door pulls as well? So the key to making this interior feel really racy is to go for the track package. That brings the extra titanium roll cage in the back and the harnesses on the seats. Well, in for a penny. Yes, it uses the same seven-speed twin-clutch gearbox as the GTR, but it has shorter ratios. A carbon fiber bonnet, roof, and boot, thinner glass front and rear, ball joint bearings for the rear wishbones, preload adjustable coilover suspension with a 10 millimeter ride height drop, adaptive dampers, adjustable torsion bars front and rear, additional underbody strengthening, and a choice between hard or softer compound Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2R tires and breathe. That's right, owning one of these cars will involve a certain amount of manual labour. The front splitter can be extended by hand by 80 millimetres and then round the back you have this quite enormous double-decker rear wing. Both the top section and the bottom section can be adjusted manually through three different angles and you've also got this centre section here which pops up automatically to act like an air brake. In terms of downforce, you've got 400 kilograms at 155 miles an hour, or 800 kilograms at the top speed of 202. So to stop your boot lid bending and deforming into all sorts of interesting new shapes, Mercedes has come up with an interesting solution. You'll notice in here, two new bump stops, and down here, two new metal braces. That means your boot lid doesn't bend, and instead all those forces are transmitted straight through the chassis and onto the road where you want them. And as an added bonus, there's a handy place to wedge your takeaway curry in there. Black Series cars have been performers, gregarious, big noise, big character cars, but this is a little bit different. It's more focused, more track ready. The curbs rattle the suspension, the grip is outrageous, and all it wants to do is just attack and devour circuits. It's quite full on. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
The engine doesn't throb and burble anymore. It seems to turn all that energy into forward motion. Obviously, you push along pretty hard, but it just doesn't feel that quick. Probably because it's less spiky in its delivery than something like the McLaren 765LT. And yet, it still manages to feel like more of an event than pretty much any supercar out there. The brakes then. Yep, yep, no quibbles with how those work. The steering, however, could do with a bit more weight. There are a lot of forces at play here and any feedback is always welcome. Overall, it weighs 1,520 kilograms, some 50 kilograms heavier than the GT2 RS, over 180 kilograms meatier than the super svelte McLaren 765LT, but it's only 35 kilograms lighter than the GTR. Favorite bit of weight saving? Undoubtedly, the world's first carbon fiber transmission mount. Half the weight of aluminium and made from a single strand of carbon wound around a series of aluminium posts up to 40 times. You have to see it to believe it's fibrous structure. At 335 grand plus options, this is well over twice the price of a GTR. It's 100 grand more than a GT2 RS. It's 50 grand more than a McLaren 765LT, which is a whopping amount of money when you consider this isn't even a limited series car. The Black Series badge is special and rare. We haven't seen one since the mighty SLS Black Series back in 2013, but there's no denying this is a Marmite car. You're either gonna love it or hate it. There's no halfway house. 